be one. I want we shall always run. And what we want to be one of the we be as the happy of our love. We will take that as we do that gift of hell. We said I be one. I want we shall. is a special day designated for our fellowship emphasis. Our fellowship is a very paramount aspect of us as a church who desire to grow spiritually and numerically. So before the word of God this morning, we shall quickly do two things. One, affecting our health, and number two, with regards to our fellowship, then we shall hear the word of God. Just very, very briefly, there is a particular tip for us with regards to the health of our female members. And uh, I will invite Dr. Uyileye to please come forward and give us the tips in a very short time. Afterward, uh, Deacon Shodoke will come and tell us briefly tips about a few things about our fellowship. God bless you, man. You are welcome. Knowing fully well that you are the Lord and God of the universe. Thank you so much because this is your church. And you always say that there are many, many sheep outside the flock that you want them to come into the fold. Father, we don't want to be guilty of not making your prophecies to come true in our own section. We want to be conscious. We want to be practical. We want to do it. We want to make your prayers answered. So that those many who are outside the flock, outside the fold, be brought in and be part of God's family. So that, Lord, your kingdom will increase and your name will be glorified. So that the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of Jesus and God our maker. Father, we pray that as we listen to your word again, touch our hearts. Yes. Deliver us from complacency. Yes. Deliver us from spiritual dryness. Yes. Jar us again up and let your name alone be glorified. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead to Acts chapter. I love that passage so much. Actually, I believe that first cause matters in all things. First cause. First cause is, or first mentioning, is a principle in biblical interpretation. If you want to talk about any issue, you first ask, where is it, has it happened first? So, you, so, so most of the time, the first mentioning often serves as a predominant guideline for all that to follow. So each time we read Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, we are getting the foundation for how the church should be. The principle remains the same. The methodology may, what? may change from generation to what? To generation. Because in those days, we don't have microphone. But the method of speaking, communicating today may warrant us using the mic and what? And this. In those days, they have to go from places to places, running up and down to win souls. We have seen here in this church where somebody got to know about our church and he has become a very paramount member of our church because of the fact that he located our church on the Facebook. So he's that serious. Very, very important. The methodology may change. The style of doing things may change. But something that will never change is the principle. So the principle is still there. 
in the scriptures, Acts chapter 2. Running together, winning together. I discovered that our fellowship is about the word together. That's what I've discovered. When you talk about our fellowship, gathering together of believers of a particular church in small, small groups, in various homes, in various locations, uh, uh, to do many things together. Very important. But if you go to Acts chapter 2, you will see the truth about this issue of together, 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 together. Let's glint through Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And I would like you to please keenly follow me. They devoted, do you see what? Them, them what? Themselves compound together to the teachings of the apostles and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with every one, every one, every one was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were, were, and had everything in selling the, their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet. Eh? Louder, please. Eh? In the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes and ate. Eh? See, that's why when I talk about let's take some time for food, it's not because I'm glutinous. I'm only being more of a Christian. That's why they call us in Yoruba, Kiriyo. That's why, that's why they got that. Uh, It's not an appellation, actually. It was an insult. It was intended to be an insult, but they were only describing who we are. They just eat from you. They move from place to place and they eat. And that's where they got the idea from. They ate together. Because there is power in eating together. This today is not for that. I will tell you someday. The spirituality of eating together. In the temple course, okay, eat together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And afterward, and the Lord added to their numbers daily those who are what? Being saved. So when we are talking about our fellowship, meeting at various locations all over the place, we are talking about number one, building our faith together. Building our faith together. That is why in our fellowship, we do primarily two things. One, we pray. Two, we share the word. Like now from this month, right? Next month, we shall begin to talk about finances. And that will run for about nine or nine weeks on finances. Well specialized, written by somebody who is very vast in it, all over the center. We are going to our money. And that's why next month shall be money. So when you see me talking about money next month, don't, it's not because I like money too much. It's because it is a good part of us and we must talk about it. So that's why, where has my money gone? It's a serious issue. It's a big question that all of us, we always ask. I brought in 50,000 by last weekend. Where, what is happening? Do anybody took any money from here? Nobody. So the question always, where has my money gone? So uh, let's see how God wants to answer all those questions. Where has your money gone? So by, from next month, first one, we shall begin to talk where your money has gone. <laughs> we can locate your money for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we are building our faith together. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 says, Iron sharpens when we come together in a relaxed atmosphere, we are able to listen. In a, that's why I don't think our fellowship should be another preaching point. No. 
And that's why we write our outline in such a relaxed mood. So that when you get there, your teacher or your facilitator or your leader is supposed not to preach to you. Is it because it is not another church. It is an extension of what? Of the church doing outreach. So it's supposed to be done in a relaxed what? atmosphere where we can interact. And it has been discovered through education, uh, education, uh, education uh, development of education, uh, educational development, that people learn more when we interact. I don't know whether you have discovered this. Many times when I want to write a book, I subject my thoughts to discussions. I'm putting up two books now. By the end of the year, the year it shall be released. I've discussed it several times with people of like minds. I said, sit down, and I throw the topic, and let's talk about it, free of charge. And I saw that when we talk and talk and talk, I will see many dimensions to the issue. You see, I may think I am the wisest, but that is not true. So by the time they start the discussion with me, I discover that there are some other aspects of the issue that I have not been able to, what, to see or to address. And I learn more, more, when we subject critical issues to what? Discussion. And, you know, when we discuss with people, you will get to hear some things from them you never thought they are passing through. Some people you thought they are just big and the devil does not touch them at all. <laughs> when they tell you their real life experience, they say, hey! You mean you pass? So yes, I'm a human being to me too. I go to toilet to poo poo. So, if somebody knows that the big man in the spirit and in money also passed through that same kind of experience, what will happen to you? So, uh -huh. This stock problem. You know, me, I have been shaking and shaking money in stocks. I thought I had lost a lot of things. Until I got there, I discovered that some people lost 50 million, 70 million, 20 million, 5 million. I said, uh -huh. My whole is not even up to 2 million. It's up to, it's up to 2 million. Sir. So I just rested my worry. <laughs> because if those who lost 50, 20 did not die, why should I die? So by practical relationship, I gleaned grace. I was able to tap faith that if somebody who, 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 who lost that big sum of millions did not die, I was easily clapping. And jumping and pressing God in the church, help me that I don't have God. Is that even up to 500,000? So why should I die? So, without any pastoral preaching, I gain faith. But you see, many times we are subjected to all kinds of caprices of the devil because we have not been able to subject our feelings and thinking to the discussions with others so that we can know that that man you see in big clothing is not as wealthy as you think. He says also having his own cup of the trouble in the nation. So whenever you see your Sunday school teacher talking about how you must live a life of faith, it's not because for him or for her too, he's up there, but he's telling you this is what all of us must, 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 must pursue. So you will not say, mm, no, no, it's because he's a rich man. But by the time he begins to share with you his own practical pain and the wound that the Jesus has inflicted on him, you will not say, oh, so you are also human beings. That's why the scripture says in the book of James that Elijah is also a man of like passion. No wonder when Jezebel threatened ordinary lady, the man fled. He ran. In fact, at the point that he got to him, he said, God, kill me. Get there with your hand. Just kill me. Despite his anointing. But I love the scriptures. At the very tail end of the Bible, the Bible says, that man you see is so gigantic in his face. He's a man. Of who? Of what? Of like passion. And that's why Apostle Paul will always tell you, if you have been beaten for the gospel, I was beaten more than you are. That's why I was, I'm not ever ashamed any day to tell you about where my failure has been over the years. So if you have a problem, you are not the only one in the race. Problems are meant for living beings. But the truth is this. All of us must sit together to see how we can break through. And one of the means of breaking through is when you listen to others share 
their practical experiences. So we build our faith together when we sit together in small, small groups. And one of those, apart from Sunday school, is also what? House fellowship. So you miss a lot for not coming. You miss a lot for not coming. You miss a lot for not coming. Proverbs, like I said, 27 verse 17. Iron sharpens iron. Number two, that our small groups like our solution will do for us is that we build others together. We have to build others together. It is in our fellowship you find authentic relationship and caring. Authentic relationship and what? And caring. Authentic relationship and what? Caring. In our fellowship we build others together. Authentic relationship and what? And caring. Authentic relationship and what? And caring. It's not in our fellowship. How do I mean? Maybe I should let you know this. I know the person involved will not be offended. Our family is expected to attend the house fellowship here. This is our own house fellowship center. The day my sons came from their center and they brought a small novel given to them by Mr. Falua to read, I was excited. Those books probably were the, those of the students who has grown up and he was able to share with my children so that when they, have our, when they come for spiritual things, they also the spirit is enjoy the other issues too. I said, Daddy said we should read it and return it. So you better read it. If you tear it, Daddy will beat you. And these are books probably I may not be able to even locate. If I, by the time I'm doing Jesus is Lord, James chapter 4, Luke chapter 5, up or down, I may not be able to attend to such. Somebody through the house fellowship has been able to reach out not only on spiritual matters to my family but also on material issues about the academic development. So, when you keep your children away or yourself away, you see what you lose. Somebody could be there also to share something vital with you. I know many times we grew up so much in this flat of four bedroom or three bedroom or two bedroom or one bedroom or half bedroom and self contained that our life is so contained and tamed. That our children don't know what happens elsewhere. I don't know whether you discover this. The other time we were doing our vacation, that we sent our children off to our grandmas. When they came, they were telling me about Asha. Say, hey, what is it? We saw this bed. Grandma will send us this. And no, grandma will tell them, take your bucket, put it on your head, go to that place in the stream, and go and fetch water. So we carry it. And my dad would do his neck like this. Say, correct. That was what your father passed through. Your father didn't grow with three bedroom flats. He grew from seven years old, hawking all over Lagos. You know many times, because we are so okay now, we thought, you know this thing that when you people put in our head, that when you train your children, it is child abuse. In Africa, it is child training, it is child abuse. That's what our children, they cannot stand alone. They know so many things, but they are not strong emotionally. The only thing they are strong is computer game, and all kinds of vices. But when they are subjected to the to real raw nature, they land the other side of life. That life is more than three bedroom flats upstairs. That it is not everybody in the world turns their tap and gets the water. They must go to the stream to fetch the water. So when they came back to me, they started sharing the stories. I said, that's great. I, I, I look at my wife. I said, correct. That is raw Nature 101. So then I said, next time we are taking you there. Go and experience more. I don't want to have children that can can speak English only. They should be able to speak their mother tongue and other things and relate properly. So that when they are talking proverbially in the family meeting, they know what it meant. God want to be talking proverbially. So, 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 such a moron, so educated, but he doesn't know the proverbial statement that happens in Yoruba land and even in the normal African region. He's so educated, but when you are making some slight on him, he's lost. And you can sell him, bind him, uh, and tell him to take him to the Potiphar's house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Our fellowship is a means of building others together. 
one of the strong elements of the church that we are not exploring properly, whether collectively or individually, is this issue of mentoring others. Mentoring. We are so busy with ourselves, we don't have people we spend our lives on. Everything is about, about me. Like testimony we pray when he was younger. Father, be, oh Lord, be with my father, be with my mother, be with me, in Jesus' name. Amen. Only me, me, my mother, my father, and me. Finish. Anybody? Mm, nobody is, is in the, this world. And many of us, as grown up as we are many times, we are always thinking that way too. Nobody is in our world. Me. I want to be rich. Me. I want to have a car. Me. I want to build a house. Me. I want to get a good job. Me. So anytime the church is not giving you me, you run away. This church is not good. You are a liar. The church is not only meant for you. You is meant for others. You are here not to receive, also to give. The Lord, if we will grow personally, if the church will grow, you must relinquish this me. It's not about you. There are other issues. We can help others. Like Paul, F. Race, and like Barnabas, F. Race, Paul of Tarsus. When others were rejecting and pushing him aside, that day, Barnabas took it upon himself and said, Don't forget, don't, don't castigate this man. He's changed, he has changed, and he took him to himself, and he took him all about. And Paul became one of the greatest men we can talk about around now. Thank God for people like Lydia, who was known for blessing lives in her location. Thank God for people like Cornelius, who is a very great military man during his time. But he was known for being a man of what? Blessing in his work, in his community. The only thing they know about many of us is, is it that man that, that man that always go with finish? You don't even bother to say, how are you? Even I look. And you know, Lagos is a dangerous place. I went to Shaki the other weekend. When we got to Shaki, the king found me said, now I know that we are in a remote place. I said, why? Well, I said, everybody is greeting you. In fact, if you greet too much in Lagos, uh, you don't get, you don't get your, any problem. Uh, good morning. I tell you about people, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. A car, a car, a car, a car. You don't have a job. But the truth is this. Life in the unauthentic community will not shy away from the other person. Original life. Life will not shy away. Because those people you have seen around you, they are part of you. And that's why when there is like something like the house burning, only you cannot handle it. Others will come and what? And pour water and do this. So people you are neglecting, they are a very important part of you. And most of, most, most of them we don't know is that some of us, those people who will raise us, raise us, probably are those people we are neglecting frequently. In fact, for many of us who are Christians, to even say good morning to our neighbors is a big, big, big job. We, live, we like to live in our high tower and we forget about what happens around us. But the truth is this. That's why you discover that many of these big houses, when robbers come to them, they shout, they shout, nobody will hear their voice. Because they have been living in the tower all alone. So if you stop alone, you die alone. But life is not about that. How do you help others? As you are sitting down here now, are there young Christians you can help? Each time we have people coming to the church and say, I, I want to join this church. And they mention number two, Olu Degu Street. And your house is number four. What do you do about it? You say, well, the visitation committee, you go and take care. No! If they do that in the morning, and you go there in the afternoon, wouldn't that be wonderful? And by the evening, the house of people were also what? You go there. I said, sorry? Go, go, go. Is there Mr. John in this place? He said, yes. Please. We are from Iria Karibati Church. You came to my church last Sunday. Eh, two people came. Sir, no. We are meant to come more. We love you. See, by that you see only you. Four people coming. Ah. These people, they love Even if you don't love <laughs> That's why you discover that deeper life, they are so strategic. They will kill you. And it's not because they are so exceptional, but they are strategic. For instance, now, 
Somebody just say, I want to give my, I want to join this church. Our fellowship, I mean, uh, presentation team, they made it, met him or her, prayed for him or her, and by Monday they got there, say, how are you? God bless you. We thank you for coming today. And on Wednesday, Mr. Jeremiah, who lives very close by, took it upon himself and said, go, go, go. good evening, how are you? What a nice day. Thank you for coming. We saw you in our church on Sunday. We, we are happy. I also live very close. My house is just the other street. Uh, thank you. God bless you. And the next Sunday, the house fellowship leader says, oh, uh, by the, it's supposed to be five by four. Say hello. Say, thank you. You came to our church last Sunday. Ah. Is it is somebody who is not important in their family, and they have important, important lies in. <laughs> Permit my word. How will he be ma? So everybody is looking for me. <laughs> I have arrived. Yes, he has arrived because it's our duty to help him. But it's just, in fact, many times, even when people are joining us, they are just sitting down there, or even in our midst. And they give somebody beside you. This is somebody who is a stranger who he didn't know. He will trace the person he knows. That's what I'm I don't know you. And that one will also, I don't know you. The, the stranger will be what? Left alone. Look and say, what kind of church is this? They are only concerned about what? Themselves. And that's why you see, we kept on having people saying we want to join the church, yet the church is not full. Do you know why? They kept on coming, they kept on dripping. Because nobody is having a grip to what? To glue them down. And she said, it is a job for all of us to what? To do. So we help others. We help others. We help others. We build others together. We help them to develop by our collective effort. And number three, we build the church together. Number one is our fellowship is all about building our faith together because we need together, enjoy issues together, talk Bible together, talk life together, talk experiences together. In a, a prayer, we share the word, we talk about testimonies, we will have time for prayers, we will try, have time this time this year for visitation, up and down, share together. Number two is that we build others together. We, are in, we form an authentic relationship. Uh, we can develop lovely relationship with people. We can care for one another. And I don't know whether you discovered this. I was sharing with church council yesterday. I don't expect that everybody can expect, uh, attend every ceremony in this church. I keep on saying it. I had one not too long ago. I'm not expecting all 400 of you to follow me to a show. Even if you love me, you wouldn't love my pocket. Because it will take so much to fit a country like the Akari Baptist Church. <laughs> But the truth is that you, you can, all of you cannot be so chance. But what, let's think about this. Let's think about this. If somebody is having a naming ceremony and everybody has gone away, some people could not go away. People where it belongs. It's our fellowship. People. And if you are 10 in your house fellowship, plus their children, plus one or two, three or four people from, that you are connected to in the church, if you're having about 30 people sitting down for a name, that is what? That is wonderful. The only thing is that instead of one one minute, it would give us three three. And we have a very long short word. Lord trust me. Which is better. Thank you, Mr. David. Which is better rather than this uh, small small meat. That is what is called naming ceremony. It's not ordinary naming. Praise the Lord. But you see, because we didn't belong to anywhere, you will feel bad that nobody is coming in our church. Belong somewhere. And somebody will share their lives with you. If you can subject yourself to belonging to somewhere, then the people you share your life with, they will share their life with you. If you sit in a company, in the comfort of a room, it may not be as neat as your house, it may be not as that dressed as your house, or comfortable as your house, not the cushion foam as your house, it could be a bench, because, but I know, even if you have a, if you have a backbone problem, you will not die within 35, 40 minutes, because, God forbid, if there is a, a, a religious war and you are taken to a prison for it, you will stay more than that. They will not even pity your backbone. That is the reality of life and the truth. So why can't we just stay the minute? Why can't we just stay and just sit down with some people? So that that day, even if 
because the way we are growing, the way we are now, and with all our busy, busy things, let me be frank with you. The old Iriakari Baptist Church is gradually fading. Hello? I don't know whether you agree. The old Iriakari Baptist Church is what? Gradually what? Fading. What do I mean? You know, when the church is still small, we, can, we know one another. We know one another by name. Madam, if I ask you to sit there, stand up and mention everybody here, will you be able to do that? No. That is an indicator that what? The whole Iraq is what? Many people whom we have started this place with, they are not what? Many of them are no more. So the kind of historical emotions that we share is no more. And we cannot realize it again. Do you know why? We cannot go back to that quantity of number again. God forbid. We cannot go back to 50 again. You cannot go back to 100 again. You cannot go back to 200 again. If you cannot go back to it again, it's better we develop a love relationship in small, small world. Small, small groups. Me, I don't spend my energy on things that will not work. That's why you keep saying, ah, in those days we used to love. What was your quantity? These are people you grew up together with. You grew up as child with them. And you grew up your business and experiences with them. You can't compare with now. Many of us, are saying, I don't, even me that I'm your pastor, I don't even know. Dicky, sir, do you know everybody here? Can, can you mention their name? You don't have Holy Spirit, too. It's, like, it's not possible. It's not. These are things that can never be achieved. When you see a pastor saying, I want to know the name of all my, all my members, it must be a pastor of a small church. But if somebody is eating 50 people, 50,000 people, even if it's bad, even the computer database, sometimes we miss, you know, Nigeria Electoral uh, Diary. My name, Makitasi, may be there. And uh, Good Lord Jonathan may be a son of your state. There are things that may not be achieved again, sincerely. And if you want to duplicate, back, duplicate that love back, the key area is by what? Belonging to what? Somewhere where you be loved and what and cared for, and when you are loved in your small group and cared for, loved in your small group and cared for, loved in your small group and cared for, that love will become a wholesome love. But when you think that everybody, 400 people, should love you at the same time, uh, sorry, you are asking for what is not possible. So we can build together then we can build the church together. That is my final issue here. Yeah? Do you know, people of God, that our basic major problem, like I said earlier, is that any church where they only think about enrich, like Dickens said, enrich, that church is under a cause of growth. I was reading some materials on the net some months ago and it says some signs of a church that will not grow. And the writer says, anytime your church members are crying for their own attention, your church will not grow. And I, I, I tried to read the article properly to see, what, what do you mean? Is he a sin to cry for, Pastor, don't forget also. It's not a sin, but the truth is this. It's only meant to be done by babies. Babies are the only ones who seek self what attention. If you say, baby, sit down. I want to go and give your daddy food. You don't have to go. Only me. Baby, sit down. I want to go and wash your nappings and your clothing. Don't go. Sit down with me. That mommy will be useless. The house will be smelling. And there will be family crisis. I challenge all several times on it. The rice we distribute, only we. The shamodi vita we distribute, only we. The money we give for assistance, only we. The scholarship, only we. The clothing, only we. Everything, we. We. And you see, you bring them and we dump them, we. Gone. It does not have any outreach dimension. Dangerous. Benevolence, no outreach dimension. Dangerous. It's good, but it could be better. 
Why? Because the church is not meant for us only. There are many sheep outside the fold that can be reached. So just consuming only when we cry, 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 me, oh, 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 is a sign that we have spiritual sickness that must be healed by God because the church life is beyond we. So when we are talking about our prayer service, it's not only about we. When we are talking about our, our, our music life, it's not only about what is pleasing to we. When we are talking about pastor preaching, it's not only we. No! There must be dimension of what? What about others? In fact, their case must take more attention. Why? Because there are many sheep outside the fold that must be what? Brought in. Because the church is meant as an outreach point of the kingdom of God on earth. We must reach others. That's why, me as a person, I believe that everything we should do in the church should be evangelism. And that does not mean department. If the choir sings, it must be evangelism. And I don't mean that they will stand up today and say, Eleshe, 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 Eleshe. Because that will not even do the evangelism. <laughs> you know how we sing when we are in... Me too, I can tell some story. At least I joined the choir in 1978. <laughs> even though I was a small boy. Praise God. It should, be, it should be more than what? We. We. Please, let's forget gradually we. It's good to think about. We cannot forget you. But the truth is this. We need to begin to talk about others. And there are two good others that we must talk about. Number one, they are the unsaved. Thank God the evangelism team, they have come up with this issue of community, neighborhood evangelism. They go out frequently. Sometimes on Sunday, after they finish probably their English service or the coffee, they go out to go and there are estates all around us. And they go out to reach their, our community. They are the unsaved. They don't know Christ. And you know that it's so funny that even these days, many times when you go to the church, praise the Lord, good morning everybody, we are from Miracle Baptist Church, we are here to talk. Before you learn, it's John 3.16. For God so loved, it's John 3.16. In the beginning, there was God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. This is the thing I want to preach to. <laughs> we must be creative with what we want to do now. It's a big duty for us. The second people that we must reach are the unchurched. Those who, who they call themselves Christians, but they don't go to church. And they are so plenty. Even, I don't know whether they are not more plenty than, uh, than, the, than the unsaved. They are so plenty in our house. This uh, daddy Jeremiah. This uh, um, brother uh, Nebuchadnezzar. That he will not come to church. Every Sunday morning, he will just put uh, Raskimono. Down, 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 down. All loud and everybody will answer this. Brother Nebuchadnezzar, what is your problem? This sound is too much. See, people say, because I mean, I go to church, too. I'm serious about my Jesus, so my heart is my God, do. What do you do about them? Unfortunately, when we give us posters to even give them, to invite them, we keep them in our watch, in our bad, in our Bible. See, we can discuss with them Chelsea. We can discuss with them Arsenal. Or Blues. Of Gunners. But you hardly have time to even cheap Jesus is Lord inside Chelsea talk. What is the problem? We can bring them to church. We can help them to develop more. But if we are not doing anything about them, God will hold all of us accountable for these wasting souls daily. So our fellowship is an outreach point of our church. In small, small groups, where four, five, ten members of the evangelism department cannot reach, you can what? We can reach it. Because if about, how many centers do we have now? About, about 22 centers we have now, all over the places. If a Sunday is speaking and they are there in the Lutheran, they are there in the Jibu, and you see, that's small, small groups, small, small groups, who will make more effect 
than just ten people going out only. Their, their, their own effect is there. But it is not as effective as when we have that diverse, multifaceted opportunity. Going out, reaching to others. And you know many times our house we have turned it to a point where we attend to ourselves only. No! Our solution is not another congregating congregation sitting down together. It's also a place where we look for opportunities. I don't know how what that is about. If we could add one or two souls to our house fellowship centers per quarter or per half of the year, our church will what? We grow. If we tell ourselves, hello, we have been there since January. And you know, lack of growth in centers is lack of growth in church. If you didn't grow in your center, your church, our church will not grow. Because if two will not come and stay in your center, they will not come to church. So, if you will join the centers and you will join force with others, you will learn, you will share experience, but more than ever, you will help others to know Jesus. Then, you will receive the reward from God and you will also be happy that this church has what? Has increased. And when they are saying, how did you do it? Say, we did it. By the grace of God. But if all of us we just bother about who we are, then we are not going anywhere. Let me recap it up this way. You can mention it in brief. I was thinking, I hope this one has not uh, peeped into my notebook. But I know it didn't. It's only the Holy Spirit at work. Hebrews chapter 10. That's why I want to cap it. Our fellowship issue is a duty. For all of us. All of us. You can help others in your centers to do better. 10, verse 23. Hebrews 10, verse 23. When I saw this, I was so encouraged. 23. Let us hold on suddenly to the hope we profess, and he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may, we may what? Spore one another on towards love and what? Good deeds. Let's think about it. Let's think about how we can steer up one another. How we can get things better. And let us not give up meeting together. You see, meeting together, as some are in the habit of what? Some are from habit. It has become a habitual habit. They don't like coming to church. When it comes, they can go to where OK Bakashi is speaking. But whenever it is uh, absolutely, they don't have time. It's an habitual problem. See, some people, they have formed the habit of not doing it. But let us encourage one another. And all the more, as you see the day approaching. Now, if you are using NIV, you see that there is hyphen. At the front of and all the more. Now, if you cut from as uh, some are in the habit of doing, cut that verse off, cut that line off, and let's say, let us not give up meeting together. And all the more as you see the day approaching. That is the implication. That means as the day of the end time is approaching, we need more and more fellowship power. Hello? Why? There are more and more discouragement pervading the land. More and more fear pervading the land. And every one of us, as we are here now, in fact, some of us, sometimes, I feel, oh, Boko Haram has not tied bomb around my car. There is more and more fear over the land. But you see, there is no other place, because it is as if CNN, they are specialists, even in bad news. And in our NTA, they are so diplomatic, they don't want to show because they don't want the government to be eroded. But other stations, they are so good at it because they are also opposition parties. They show even the force and where the problems are. And where the problems are, they are just the dead bodies of roasted human beings. Bad, bad news all over the land. But as the day is approaching, because these are the signs of the end time, nations will arise against nations. There will be multiples of war in the land. Signs of the end time. We cannot avoid it. It will come. And it will be more and more. So if it's either you pray for long life or you ask that God will take you away. But as long as you ask for long life, you will see more. <laughs> more. As you see more, you are threatened. You are afraid. You are intimidated. It's, it's, sometimes you feel like, let's all die, daddy. 
But you will not die now because God is the owner of your life. You will still stay. But as the day is approaching, there will be more and more terror, more and more trouble in the land. But you see, the only place you get the power to stay is in the fellowship. That's why when the apostles were beaten, they reported back to their fellowship and they gained strength. And after gaining strength, they prayed and the whole place shook because their faith increased. More and more we gain grace and strength as we fellowship. The more we run away from fellowship, we lose courage, we lose strength. Why? Because everything we can turn to, even the psychologists are afraid. More and more we need strength. More and more we need courage. More and more we need boldness. But the only center where there is power, it is the fellowship center. Where we meet together and we share experiences. And we cry together. And we talk together. And we pray together. And we see the pain together. And we can pray genuinely and sincere together. Because most of the time we come to church fake. Do you know what I mean? I don't appear like this every day. Because if you allow me, me, I would have loved to wear t-shirts. And she does are here. This one, I don't so much. It's not the me. It's only pastor thing that makes me wear this. And most of it, with all these things, air tie you are putting on, it's not you. But where you see the original self, where you get to knock your son, shut up, sit down! Oh, God, don't son. It's in the fellowship center. Your original self is, is there. Where you see that man that looks so big, you get to his house. So he's living in this humble place. So when he says, let's pray for Mr. John, you really, really pray. It's only you get the energy and the strength at the fellowship center. So why do you run away from the place of power? It's just like a car. That is, I'm trying to direct it to a petrol station. It's trying to turn it itself back. It will soon die. The Lord, we need more grace. I'll be a blessing. I'll be a blessing. And I'll be a blessing. Father, we thank you because you have answered our prayers. Glory be to your name, O Lord. Help us as a church that we will no more be selfish. That we will think about your kingdom and we will put you first above all other things in our lives. And at the end of the day, when the road shall be called yonder, names shall be attached to our list as an instrument who has helped others to discover Jesus. Thank you, Father, because at the end of the day, the kingdom of this world shall become your own kingdom. And only your name alone shall be glorified. We lift up all our, our fellowship workers into your hands. We ask, O oh God, that you renew their strength. Amen. Wherever they are discouraged, because people are not turning up as they should, we ask, O oh God, that you give them fresh strength, fresh courage, fresh hope, fresh faith, Amen. fresh health, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Pray for every home where we have meetings, Every Sunday, we ask, O oh God, that you bless all our hosts in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you multiply their food in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated.